Free TV in association with getoutofdebtfree.org. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. And um, I'll just speak for a few moments about the technology that Colin showed you briefly. Um, we've been working on it since, I think, about November, December last year. And um, it's, there's dif different ways of explaining what it is. It's uh, quite... Um, it's, it's the best way is for me to just demonstrate it, but it's, it's, it can be thought of as a form of uh, mind mapping. And instead of mapping from the centre outwards, you're actually mapping inwards infinitely. So you have a fractal... Um, so, for example, here's a, an element here that has been labelled Earth, and I can go into Earth, and I can see, oh, there's, there's a, an element here, Dorchester, and go into that, and then, or oh, Town Centre, and I'll go into that, and then there's a, like a health food shop here. Or if I go into this High West Street, which is a, a road in Dorchester, and then there's a house coming off of that, and I can go in there, and I can see there's a kitchen in there, and there's a sink in the kitchen, and a kettle, and... These red, because they're red, uh, that uh, corresponds to a, a key over here, which says it's a resource. So, uh, um, basically, it, it's a way of mapping thoughts and also things, uh, both being objects of perception. And um, when we perceive a thing, we actually infer that there's something beyond our perception in, in what we call the physical world or the energetic environment. So, we can actually map anything outside of us in the physical world we infer is there, or any um, object of perception, or any w thought, which, which is also an object of perception, but typically we don't really, we're not fully, well, um, we don't make that distinction very often. But um, So what, what, what I want to do with this is use it to um, create systems that will make it easier for us to share resources, and also to uh, assist in the co-creative process. So, so right now, uh, we could actually map the environment we're in. in and this is, each of these elements is called a holon. And a holon is a, a whole and a part simultaneously. So um, thoughts can be mapped holonic. So you can have a thought with a sub-thought and a sub-sub-thought. And you can map intentions holonically. So you can have an intention with a sub-intention and a sub-sub-intention. So a project might be, say, this one, Wayfair, and it might have sub-intentions like things to do, and uh, you can map a contact, and within that, skills, and then sub-skills, like, see, there's, there's computer skills, and then programming skills, and then... Um, so you can basically map anything that you can perceive, any thought or thing, and you can categorize those thoughts and things, um, say, by color, uh, or you could change the shape. And um, I think that, that basically this will allow us to share our perceptions and, and enhance, uh, increase our awareness of what's around us. So we could map the entire festival here, for example, which um, I, will, I will do. And I'm giving a talk on Monday and I'll be demonstrating it because um, I, I hadn't prepared for this. So I didn't know. It, it just sort of ad-libbing here, really. But any, anyway, um, we can only perceive what is immediately around us, but if, of course, if we're all perceiving what um, is immediately around us and we're all in different places and then we can share our perceptions, either psychically or through technology, we expand what we perceive. So imagine, like, you know, right now, if you point upwards, if you point in any direction, in fact, there are stars beyond the space that you can perceive. So the stars all above us, the stars all below us, and we're on a three di well, we, we perceive ourselves to be on a three-dimensional body, and we can call that whatever we want, Earth, Gaia. But if we point downwards, somewhere there are human beings on the other side of the planet experiencing something, and this technology allows us to map our perceptions and share them. So if we all map our resources, and we, then we can see all the resources around us, which might include contacts with skills, as well as physical resources, and then orbiting those, we've got thoughts and intentions. We've actually got everything we need to self-organize ourselves based on intentions. And through sharing resources and collaborating, we can create 
all sorts of, um, you know, technologies and organize. Yeah. <laughs> How on earth did you have enough time to input all the data? You wouldn't be able to live. Because um, you only need each person to input a small amount of data, and because there's a lot of people, it, it creates a lot of data. But it, within a within a community, it really, it's designed to enhance communication within a community and between communities, and you. You don't need map what is useful for people to perceive. So, like, if you're a sofa surfer, um, you would be searching for sofas that people have mapped. And each person only has to map one sofa. But then they might share a space. And so, like, w when I give the talk on Monday, I'll, I'll have some examples of things to point to. Because this is all just... Uh, unfortunately, I've got nothing really to refer to because there isn't anything in this database on, on this laptop is on a different laptop <laughs> but, but yeah there's um, you, you you only input what you want to share so uh, we don't have to map yeah I was gonna say the other thing is also you can make algorithms for example that could import data so you wouldn't actually have to type data entry is one of the things I've been talking to Chris about as well there's a number of things you could look at from you know algorithms to import certain bits of information if you you're using existing services and wanted to move over Another option would be <coughs> to uh, you know, develop, uh, like Chris says, systems which, in a way, you can just take photographs to develop, and then that becomes the thing, right? Whatever it is. Yeah, there's, it's, that's a what, what I would call a practical or a technical issue. So it, there's various solutions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you would really only upload what you are happy to share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, are my pixel images, this is like another version of an image. And I, personally, I've used this, um, what Chris said earlier about a great business plan. And it's far quicker than writing out a business plan with all, all the words. It's quicker to create and quicker to refer back. So, and, and for me, from an education, Yeah, you can you can map anything to an arbitrary degree of accuracy because it's a fractal. You can map an infinite amount of data theoretically within a finite space. So, you could you know you could map like you have the the planet and then like land masses and then cities and then uh, buildings or infrastructure and then rooms and then the things in the room and then the things like like laptop like there's a thing in the room and then the the key keys and you could then map the the molecular structure of the components and you could go you know there's in you're talking about a sort of you know yeah, inwards and outwards dimension aren't you uh, scope you, um, you mentioned privacy and i think that's yeah. a very important thing yeah. one of the uh, things i was sort of uh, suggesting is that when you look at a map shape and space has a kind of reference and if you're in the game so we've got a number of like gaming technologies for um, you know gamifying your business and gamifying your life making it more fun but the point is unless you're into the game unless you know the rules of the game unless you know what that sphere over there in relation to that there means you don't get what the information means so if you, if you brought it up as a kind of series of x and y coordinates it wouldn't mean anything without the map and if you, even if you have the map it still doesn't mean anything unless you've got yeah you know the invite to the game what, what are the rules? Who's playing what? It's a piece. Da, 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 da. So there's a number of ways in which actually information like this is in a way more coded than not. So for example, that's a target game we were just messing around with. So we have like put your business objectives, the ones that are most important towards the centre of the target, and you could t colour them red. And as people complete them on your online gaming thing, I did this, I did that, I did that, it would show you who's doing all the tasks in your business and who what time they were done and you could assi you could ass assign we were talking about assigning values to that whether it be social economic or um, ethical value so actually there's a, there's a massive um, potential beyond and be it goes beyond the privacy thing because you need to kind of be in with the game you know, to, 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 to 
properly understand it. So, for example, that doesn't mean anything to you, but it, for us it does because we were playing it. When, yeah, it's, it's beca basically it's because you're like having an interaction whilst you're mapping when you're doing it with someone else. And the, the position of the holons and the size and the colour all acquire an intersubjective meaning through, through that interaction. And that is a form of privacy because that, that data is stored in the consciousness of the, the individuals who co-create the map. So afterwards, if someone comes and looks at it, uh, Colin's saying they, they can't get as much data out of it as, as you have in your mind because the, it, this is almost like a, a like a, um, a memory jogger it really it, it that makes sense does that make sense so so here we've got like intentions they're blue so um, we, we might not have the key down the side it, we may just map it and we'll agree oh yeah blue will be an intention so that's stored in our brains it's not stored in the in the map uh, the association and then you know, within an intention, you you, you have uh, you, you know you can have sub intentions and sub sub intentions and you know whatever you want. But, um, yeah. Yeah, it's also it's like a, it could also be called a, a semantic um, network. Uh, on the level of the data, this is a visualization of it, but it's actually a it's a the, the graphs. It's called a directed graph structure. But um, yeah, the brain. I, I, I looked into that as well, and it is very similar. I think one of the interesting things about this is that you can have real time interaction on the internet. You can set up real time games. Oh, I can see the, the, and, the um, differences between yeah, the sound and the brain. The brain is a brilliant. I mean, yeah. for anyone who wants to sort of like have a free piece of software that just can you know, help you just get ideas together and da 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 really quickly, the brain is another brilliant free tool, isn't it? And there's lots of other ones that are out there that can help. But what I was going to say was that. Um, This is one way of representing the data and one entry point into it. But if you have a, there's a lot of people that don't, can't work with something like this. They would also need to have just a printout document to put sections on it. So they can read search it like it works. Works. Yeah, and um, like I think one of the problems with Facebook at the moment and social networking and these systems in general is that we're stuck with one interface and what I wanted to do with this technology is separate the data from the interface so anyone could implement their own interface, customize it, they could uh, have it looking however they wanted. So yeah, you, you could create a linear representation of the information stored in this map. This is just uh, one way of visualizing it. You could um, you could visualize it in lots of different ways, but the the actual way it's visualized is also important because it creates a certain shared meaning when you're co-creating it. It acquires a shared meaning. So, so when you're presenting it to people in, in this kind of way, like today, it, yeah. a good way of presenting it to people would also be to give a little alternative data structure to represent it so that they can understand it as a document, for example, that can be read, but you can also represent it as this three-dimensional structure, this three-dimensional line here, yeah. very much of it, but then take that same data set that you've just shown and show it as a, a HTML document, for example, or some kind of markup, text markup language. Uh, yeah, we, we so want to do that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you, you could you could turn it into like XML or, or there's lots of things, but um, you could just show it as as a word document because then people would think, oh right, okay, it's the same information in there, but it's put into a more re relationship structure that I can. Yeah, it's 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 a set of nodes and a set of links that link the nodes, and that is what it in the in the form of its data structure in the form of data, not a visual experience like this. That's what it is. It's a list of, a set, sorry, not a list, a set, because it's unordered yeah. of nodes and links. But any, anyway, yeah, uh, I just... Um, I've used search engines like this. There was various attempts to make search engines, which basically were spheres that you zoomed in on to see your results, but they never took off. Yeah. But 
see over there, like, say, say we could map Earthheart and we could map this laptop, we could put in a resource laptop. And then, if you imagine, we, we could use something like this to combine sofa surfing, free cycle, all of the resource sharing inter uh, systems on the internet that, that form a gift economy. And we could have a, a community which is local or non-local. So um, we might have off-grid being like a non-local community. We might have Bristol being a local community. And within that, we could map all of the physical resources, buildings, assets in what I call the technosphere. It's a, uh, that word wasn't coined by me. It was um, Jose Aguiles who also coined, uh, who also uses the term new sphere. So we can map all of the thoughts on the, and that's the new sphere. We can map all of the physical assets, and that's the technosphere. And then we've got living organisms in the biosphere. And if you click your fingers, you can pay attention to any one of those spheres. At any moment, so you have free will to decide what you do with your mind and your consciousness. And um, yeah, I think if we if we look at the the now, the unfolding now, in terms of these three systems, and map it in a fractal way, we can actually perceive our whole environment um, holistically and see how it's all related. So uh, it can help us to um, structure information and different systems of organisation, and we could. Um, say like around the laptop, you could now put an intention, yeah. So you're like, please fix this laptop, or find find someone to fix the laptop, and put thoughts around it, and then you could send that to your friends, or you could put an intention, make Bristol self-sufficient, yeah. And then everyone connects to that intention and starts sharing all their resources and ideas and knowledge, and you, you don't need a, a hierarchical control structure. You don't need a large monetary institution or a governmental institution. If everyone can see what's around them, what skills, resources are around them, then they can co-create whatever they want with a shared intention. So <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do here is empower co-creation and resource sharing. But uh, I'm giving a talk on Monday about that specifically. This is I hadn't planned this, and there's no data to really demonstrate anything yeah. useful to you. But, but yeah, I think you know, we, could, we could map this environment right now we could put ourselves in as contacts and we could map our skills within our contact. Well, you could put um, in, you used to get the council to put all their stuff on Monday and then you could see how inefficient they were and like, show them how they could do it better. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And we're, we're going to be working with businesses. Um, like our, we've got, this is like a kind of holonic business plan here, yeah. We've got Wayfair, which is social. So applying this technology called NewMap to knowledge, uh, which is the knowledge base that Colin showed you. Then we've got Waysphere, which is a social networking implementation, so it's like a holographic or fractal social network. And then in business, we can we can map like um, like accounting. You can map expenses, tax return, cash flow, lots of different areas of business that we can use. And then with the True World Order, we could actually implement new map in each of the spheres of endeavor. So then you'll end up with a kind of fractal hollow web, like a new kind of internet that is holographic, categor categorized by these. So you could be like, so say, so instead of like being a consumer, you could live in a, a sort of co-creative, instead of being a consumer in a, in a town, in a county, in a country, uh, you, you could be a co-creator in a, in a co-creative zone and you could see like, say, uh, you're an artist, pull in the art, art sphere of endeavor and see all of the intentions, assets, places, contacts, and skills relating to art. Does that make sense? So if, you, we could ex if we make everything free by sharing everything, then we could sort of live in a post-survival state where we can just enjoy ourselves and pursue our, our dreams. And uh, this, this kind of technology would just help us to do that. Just, it's just like the informational infrastructure. It's like the new, a new matrix that we can implement in parallel with the existing sort of matrix, which is monetary technology and, um, well, I suppose to some extent our nervous systems as well, including the sort of the memeplex that is within the, the new sphere of, of human thought. So like, what is money and all, like, you know, all of these things. And I'm just talking and yeah, talking sorry. until you stop me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'll just I'll say next to Chris. Yeah. Yeah.
Thanks a lot to Chris uh, showing us. He's, you've got a talk on Monday as well, I believe, uh, where we have a proper demonstration. But I just wanted to show you some people, because it does tie into whilst we talk about True World Order. And have we got Sunbird, is it now? Yeah. Yep, you, are you up? Yeah? I think so. Okay, so um, I'll pack my stuff away. Thank you very much. Thank you. Debt Free TV, in association with getoutofdebtfree.org.